Hi everyone, it is absolutely fantastic to be standing before all of you today for our annual meeting. Uh, so my name is Liz, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I am the current Middle East Policy Program Assistant here at FCNL. Uh, in other words, I help advocate for legislation that promotes peace and diplomacy in the Middle East. Uh, sometimes that means working to get the U.S. out of the war in Yemen or preventing escalation of war with Iran or amplifying the voices of Palestinians and Israelis working for peace in the region. Um, as with any story, my path to FCNL isn't a straight and narrow line. It's a weird conglomeration of happenstance, situational luck, and a little bit of willpower. Um, in college, I spent a lot of time in the activist community. A lot of my work was centered on this general idea of advocating for other people with other people. So I might be pushing for transgender rights on campus, or rallying for Black Lives Matter, or assisting with a potential strike for workers' rights. It makes sense. I went to a Jesuit university, and they tend to emphasize that kind of thing. Um, there's something incredibly powerful about being surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands, of people in this moment of warm solidarity, all with the same goal of working against what feels like impossible odds. In the summer of 2016, I was accepted as an intern for Senator Durbin's office doing casework. At first, I remember feeling a bit resentful about applying. I was supposed to be this young, radical college student who refused to work for the system. Um, but what I found when I got there was that, um, on that first day, was that there wasn't this broken system in the office. Um, it was people. Good people genuinely passionate about working through the system to make a better world. And quite frankly, I found my work captivating. I saw those beautiful grains of success, like when I got to tell someone that they received their green card after years of waiting. It was like taking an active part in another side of democracy, and I loved it. Now, at this point, I knew I wanted to dip my toes into policy work, but that's still a large umbrella of a career, so I had to think a little harder. What type of policy work engaged my interest? I remember when the FCNL application asked me which program to apply for, I made my first choice Middle East policy. It just made sense. Um, I do come from Palestinian heritage. Uh, my grandfather was born in Ramallah. But for a very long time, the Middle East to me was this place in the sand where all the wars were. But no need to go into it. The Middle East is too complex to understand anyway. I had no idea what it meant to be Palestinian for a very long time. In fourth grade, I had a project to talk to my parents about my heritage. It's one of the only times I remember my father bringing up Palestine. I asked him where he was from, and he went on and on about his mother's side of the family, and then sort of waved his hand in the air and said, yeah, and you're also Palestinian, but, well, they're not really a country anymore. For years, I had no idea what that meant. It wasn't until high school when I started learning and in college until I comfortably understood the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Whether it be folks in the West Bank with water tanks on top of their houses in the face of Israeli military restrictions or on their water supply or almost half the population of Gaza facing unemployment. I came to realize that, yes, what's happening in the Middle East and in Palestine is an incredibly complex situation with many oppressions and histories involved. At the same time, there are also important stories that are much simpler, where the most fundamental human rights are regularly violated. And these include crises like in the West Bank and Gaza where our government is directly involved. So jumping back a bit, FCNL initially crossed my path in college when I was Googling all the different policy fellowships that I could do after I graduated. I accidentally stumbled upon FCNL's website and scrolled through it to look at all those different issues that FCNL advocated for, from nuclear nonproliferation to supporting immigrants to lowering Pentagon spending. All I could think was, wow, I support literally everything on this list. I just had to apply. 
It was the perfect match for my deep passion for social justice and my own interest in nerding out over policy. I turned in my application, got an interview, got another interview, got another interview, and I got rejected from the program. I was so disappointed. My dream fellowship had fallen through. But what's interesting is a big part of the reason I'm here today is because of that rejection. Uh, or, or more accurately, how I was rejected. Um, after our interviews, Kate Gould, uh, FCNL's phenomenal lobbyist uh, for Middle East policy, did much more than say I didn't get the job. She went out of her way to send a long, lovely email about how strong I had been as a candidate and that, these sh and that she thought I would thrive in any form of advocacy work on the Hill. She told me she had faith in me. Most significantly, she told me she wanted to stay in touch. Now, just looking at her background, seeing how prominent a lobbyist she was in DC, how her efforts had helped bring about legislation as big as the Iran nuclear deal, it meant the world to me that this important stranger in DC was willing to go so out of her way to support some college student senior out of Illinois. And it showed me a thing or two about the people who work for FCNL that they truly care about the people they interact with. So I did just that. I stayed in touch with FCNL. And when the time came, I went through the process again. Turned in my application, did an interview, did another interview, did another interview, and I got the fellowship. <laughs> So to wrap up, I am genuinely grateful to have the opportunity to stand on this podium today. It's quite frankly an honor to get to be actively working with so many people passionate about doing good, taking part in work meant to make the world a better place, even when that work seems beyond doing. People willing to work past the fear that the world is beyond saving and say we must at least try. I am just deeply glad that my weird mosaic of a life story brought me here today. Thank you.